Hello and welcome to Graxful Gaming and what I'm calling episode 0 of a Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands playthrough. This short video is just going to be a brief mod talk and then a discussion about how I'm actually going to play the character. Uh, if that doesn't interest you, go ahead and move on. Episode 1 is going to be everything that happens in the vault. Episode 2 is going to pick up just outside the vault. So, first up, mods. In case you're not aware of what it is, Tale of Two Wastelands is a massive uh, Fallout New Vegas mod that actually lets you play Fallout 3 in the New Vegas engine. This has a lot of beneficial side effects. Uh, for starters, New Vegas has always been a bit more stable than Fallout 3. Um, and on top of that, I believe the, the mod makers made the, uh, the whole thing even more stable because, yeah, it was better than Fallout 3 stability-wise. It still liked to crash a lot. Additional effects, all of the additional ammo types, ammo crafting, whole expanded crafting system from New Vegas now shows up in Fallout 3's Capital Wasteland. Oh, it's fantastic. That's one of the things I loved about uh, New Vegas. There are a whole bunch of other changes to both games. A whole bunch of items got rebalanced, some perks got rebalanced, all the bobbleheads do something different now. Uh, creatures in the Capital Wasteland, some of them will have damage thresholds that will have to contend with. Bunch of stuff like that. Additional mods. I'll be using a version of the mobile truck base as a sort of immersive form of fast travel. Uh, the specific version I'm using will actually let me take the truck back and forth between games. Um, which is going to be kind of interesting, and that's going to lead me to the next mod. Uh, I'll be using Benny Humbles You and Steals Your Stuff. So the first time I travel to New Vegas and the incident with Benny happens, I will be uh, the character will be reduced back down to level one. All of my loot's going to get stolen. However, Benny will not be able to steal the truck, and I'm not using the uh, the add-on for that mod that lets him do that. Now I'm not going to use the truck to smuggle a bunch of really nice gear into New Vegas and just wreck the game balance in the early areas. I'm not planning to do that. I'm definitely not going to do that. It's just the way I'm planning to do that transition, which won't be for quite a while yet. I need the truck there. That's why I'm doing it that way. Uh, additional mods. I am using Immersive HUD. So there's going to be basically nothing on my HUD for the first episode. Um, things will appear and disappear when they're needed. So stuff will show up in combat or if I have a weapon out, some stuff will show up. And then they'll disappear a few seconds after I don't need it anymore. Starting in episode two, the compass is going to stay on screen. Because I like having the compass on screen, even if I'm not using quest markers. Sometimes I use those, sometimes I don't. Uh, there will, however, be an in-universe reason for why that compass is there. Now, any more mods? Oh yeah, texture packs. Uh, I have a number of texture packs. The New Vegas ones were great. However, because I'm pretty bad at setting them up, and the ones with Capital Wasteland didn't work out quite as well. This is on me, not on the mod makers. I made some mistakes, I think, and yeah, things didn't go ideally. Everything still looks really good, with the exception of some of the rocks out in the, wild, out in the wilderness. You know, honestly, it kind of looks like the texture packs either didn't apply at all or didn't apply properly in those cases, and they just look like rocks from a really old video game. Which means they kind of stand out amongst how incredible everything else looks. Uh, I do have a lighting mod, which makes nights a little darker, but I have up my brightness to help compensate for that. Uh, the lighting mod also gets rid of the filters that are over both games, because I'm colorblind and those filters really mess me up. Uh, yeah, that's all the mods. Playstyle. I am a VATS player because my hands shake really badly. I can't really do precision free aiming. I certainly can't do snap aiming. Best I can do is uh, aim for center mass and hope, or very slowly and carefully line up a sniper shot. So yeah, I use that's a lot, not exclusively, but a lot. That wasn't intended as a uh, accessibility feature, but it really kind of is an accessibility feature. And I love it, it lets me play games in a way that I wouldn't really be able to play. Now, now how am I going to be playing the character? I'm going to be role playing. Usually when I'm speaking, I'm going to be speaking in character. Not necessarily going to be reading out the dialogue lines word for word, but, you know, it'll be more or less the general gist of it. This does mean that in the first episode, I'm not going to say a lot in the earlier parts because uh, 
can only say much at birth or age one. The talking isn't going to really kick in until uh, the 10th birthday. I will occasionally break character and say something out of character. I will try to make it very obvious when I do that. I think that covers everything for playstyle and everything in this video. Uh, I hope to see you for episode one. Goodbye.